Hi, I'm Ash from Droning On, and in this video, we'll be looking again at the Rodeo 150 from Walkera. It is a very capable little RTF aircraft straight out the box, but there are a few tips and tricks that we can do to make it just that bit better. Enjoy the video, and please remember to like and comment. Also, subscribe and share if you find this video useful. Okay, so what you're gonna need, first of all, of course, you're gonna need your transmitter, most likely a Devo 7 if you bought the RTF kit with your Walkera Rodeo 150. You're also, of course, gonna need your quadcopter, mine's missing an antenna, ignore that. Um, and you're gonna need a USB cable. You got one of these with your package, so go grab your box and pull the cable out. You may not have used it before now. There are also two important safety checks to make. The first one is to remove your props. The reason is whenever you're programming a quadcopter, get these props off because you don't want to put in a setting accidentally and cause these to spin up to full revs. So only put the props back on when you finish programming and even then when you power up the quadcopter for the first time, hold on to it hard just in case they power up. The other safety check is to put an antenna onto your video transmission port. The reason for that is if you don't have an antenna on there, your internal video transmitter PCB can heat up to the point where it causes permanent damage to it. Always have an antenna connected when you power up any quadcopter with a video transmitter. Okay, we're ready to start. So first of all, we're going to install CleanFlight. So we're going to start by installing CleanFlight. This is the application that you'll be using to configure your quadcopter software flight controller. Start up Google Chrome. If you don't already have Chrome installed, get it installed. You'll need it. Unlike a traditional application, the CleanFlight configurator is an extension within Chrome. So it runs within the web browser. So first of all, search for CleanFlight. In the results, you'll see the Clean Flight Configurator, and you need to click that. I'll also provide links to all of these in the video description. Once you see the Clean Flight Configurator pop up in Chrome, click Add to Chrome, and that will allow you to install it. You'll get some warnings that it'll need access to your USB port and to display notifications. Just click Add App, and the install process now starts. Okay, once the installation is finished, Chrome will show you the apps bar and you'll have a new clean flight option here. So to access this in future, you use the apps area of your shortcut bookmarks bar, click that, and then you can access clean flight. Now we're ready to program our quadcopter, but we first need to get the drivers installed. So at this point, you need to connect the USB cable to your laptop, and then plug the other end of that cable into your quadcopter. As soon as you do that, your PC will no doubt make a little noise like mine just did, and you'll see an installation in the bottom right-hand corner of your operating system to show that it's installing the drivers ready for the quadcopter. Now I'm running Windows 10 here, and I didn't need to install anything separately. The operating system automatically got the correct drivers for my USB device here and installed them for me. Okay, so we are now ready to get into clean flight. So click on the icon with your USB cable connected to your rodeo and then maximize it. And we're now in the clean flight interface. Up at the top, you'll see that a port has automatically been found. Now that's the port that's been assigned to our Rodeo 150. If you don't have that port there or it still says manual selection, then your Rodeo probably hasn't installed properly. So with the port selected, click connect. And we are now in the clean flight interface. So you can see here, if I move my aircraft around, the real time representation of the aircraft or actually of the flight controller is shown on the screen. Really cool. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna change here is the way that we arm the Rodeo 150. Out of the box, you press and hold the throttle control and leave it over to the left. 
uh, to disarm you hold it to the right but that there's quite a delay before it actually arms and disarms for that reason I actually personally think it's more dangerous because if it is heading towards somebody you want to be able to cut those motors immediately not have to hold that to the right for two seconds. So what we're gonna do is assign the arm and disarm to this switch up here, because we're not using this for the Rodeo 150 normally. It's a two click switch, so it has three positions. What we're gonna do is arm in position two. So two clicks instead of one. So set that to position zero for now. Turn on your transmitter and arm your Rodeo 150 with a battery. So, transmitter on, put the battery into your Rodeo. There we go, okay, so we've now turned on, we're all connected, we've still got the USB cable connected and so, as you can see on the screen, our movements are still connected live there. So, first thing we're gonna do is we need to locate which auxiliary number this switch relates to. So click on the receiver screen and now you'll see all of the real-time controls that have been received from the transmitter. So as I move the sticks of the transmitter you can see all of the movements there as well. Change the auxiliary position of the switch we've decided to use a few times and you'll be able to identify which channel it is. So here we can see that it's auxiliary 2. Now that we've identified which auxiliary port it's using, go to the modes screen and you'll see here we have lots of different features. One of them is arm. So click add range under arm and set it to aux2. That's assigning the arm function to auxiliary 2 on our transmitter. Now as we click that switch on the transmitter between the three different positions, you'll see a little green line that moves into different places. So we want it to arm when it's in position two. So flick the switch to position two, you'll see the green line moves over here. Therefore, move the sliders so that they surround the green line. Now these don't have to be exactly placed as long as they are in the middle of where the green line is. The sets, positions of the green line will never change. So as long as you've got them roughly surrounding it, that'll be absolutely fine. And that's it. Click save. When you click save, it resets the flight controller and you'll get a few beeps from your rodeo. And there you go. So now set it back. And that now tells us that our rodeo is armed when we flick the switch. So to test that, I can now flick the switch to position two. Again, make sure you do not have the props attached to your Rodeo 150. So set the switch to position two. And now put your throttle up and your motors will start. Flick the switch back to zero and your motors won't start. So that was really easy, wasn't it? The next feature we're gonna do is very similar to that one. We're gonna be using the same screens. And in this bit, we're going to assign the beeper to a button. Now this may seem pointless because if you turn off your transmitter, the Rodeo 150 will beep anyway. But if you do happen to lose your Rodeo 150 somewhere, you don't want it beeping away and somebody else finding it before you do. So I like the idea of this being able to assign one of your switches that you're not using to the beeper so that you can turn the beeper off when you're walking towards where it is. And as you get closer, flick your switch and the beeping will start. You can skip this option if you don't feel it's necessary, but I like the idea. So we'll go back to our receiver screen and we're gonna use this again to locate which channel this switch belongs to. So flick the, the switch up and down a few times and you can see that it belongs to auxiliary three. We're now going to go into our modes tab again, and you'll see in here there's an option for beeper. Click add range. So the first thing we need to do is change that to auxiliary three, which is the setting that we identified on the receiver tab. If we now flick that switch up and down a few times, you'll see the green blob moving again. 
Now this switch only has two positions, therefore its movement is more extreme than before. But as before, all we need to do is move the sliders so that they enclose the green blob, like that. Again, you don't have to be exact. And then click save. Flight controller will reset. We'll switch our switch back. And now if we test that, there you go. The next feature that we're going to enable is called Air Mode. Now the concept here is that when you're flying your quadcopter around and performing acrobatics, if you try and do a roll and you set your throttle to zero, the rotors will stop spinning completely and that can cause the quadcopter to, to become slightly unstable. The concept with Air Mode is that when you're at minimum throttle, your props will keep spinning at the slowest possible speed, but without making your quadcopter actually be flying in a specific direction. So what you're trying to do here is find the lowest speed that your props can spin at and then we're going to set that and assign it to minimum throttle. So the first thing we do is go to the configuration tab. And there's an option here that you'll see called motor stop. And what we're going to do is toggle that option off. Okay. Now, associated with this feature is the minimum throttle value here. Out of the box, it's at 1073. Now, I found that that was too slow, and the reason is brushless motors need a certain amount of throttle to turn reliably. Otherwise, your motor will hesitate and it will kind of not really spin, it will just fluctuate and twitter a bit. So, I found that setting that to 1100 was an acceptable value for my motors, and I'll show you how to test if that's acceptable on yours. So, once you've set that, First thing to ensure is that your arm switch that we configured earlier is set to zero. We do not want to arm our rodeo yet. So set that to zero, make sure your throttle is at zero, and then click save and reboot. So there you go, the flight controller has now rebooted on our rodeo 150 and we're ready to test the configuration we've just put in. So. What we've now done, remember, is enabled air mode. What that means is as soon as we arm our Rodeo 150, the motors will start spinning. Just again, make sure you do not have the props installed at this point. So, let's test it. We'll turn the arm switch on. And there you go. Now, our motors are just about spinning. Remember that this is a gyro as well, so if your quadcopter is not completely level, some of the motors may not spin. Mine are hesitating a little bit here, so I'm going to disarm and I'm going to increase that minimum throttle just a tiny bit, so I'm going to set it to 1150 instead. Click save and reboot. Okay, we're now rebooted. Flick to arm again. And now all of my motors are spinning reliably, and that's what you're looking for in air mode. And that's it. So just remember to tweak this value by small amounts just until your motors are all spinning at the same time. Do remember again that these are subject to the gyro, so make sure that your Rodeo 150 is on a flat surface. Otherwise, you might find that you can't get all of the motors spinning at the same time at all at minimum throttle. And finally, the last setting that we're going to change here is called One Shot 125. Basically, this is a different communication method between your flight controller and your speed controllers. They're the elements that control your motors. Now, I don't know for sure whether the Rodeo 150 uh, speed controllers can take full advantage of One Shot 125. The speed controller has to be compatible with it. However, I've enabled it on mine. My Rodeo 150 does feel a little bit more pokey. This one shot 125 speeds up the communication between your flight controller and your speed controllers. So it means you might get slightly more responsive control from your quadcopter. This one is really easy. Click the configuration tab, turn one shot 125 on, and then click save and reboot. It's as simple as that. So there isn't really any test for this other than flying it, but that's it. So you've now finished programming your Rodeo 150. The first thing to do is to unplug the USB cable and also unplug it from its battery. 
Next, we're going to turn off the transmitter and put the props back onto the Rodeo 150, making sure that you've got the props on the correct motor. And if you look at the tiny little um, symbols on each of the motors, you'll see which way you have to do each one of them up. So with the props all installed properly, we're now going to power it up. So turn your transmitter on, making sure that all switches are at the zero position first, and then put the battery into your Rodeo 150. There we go. Now, be very much aware that these new settings mean that your rotors will start when you arm the quadcopter. So, before you do anything, when you've got your props back on, when you finish programming, always hold on to the top of the quadcopter before powering it back up. First thing I'm gonna do is arm it. So, we're gonna flick our switch that we've assigned to arm to position two. But remember also that with air mode also now enabled, the props will start spinning when we arm the quadcopter. They'll spin at minimum throttle, but that could still hurt you if you're not expecting it. So, arm the quadcopter. And the props start spinning. They're spinning at a good speed. They're spinning at the speed we need them to be spinning at, so that if I let go of the quadcopter, it's not gonna fly away. This arm. Okay, now I'm going to che check that the beeper that we've configured works as well. So flick down that button. Perfect. Now I can't ever recommend flying a quadcopter like this indoors, but I've been flying for a while. I'm just going to quickly test it. For your maiden flight after any configuration, you really should be doing it outdoors in a big field or at least in a, a big warehouse somewhere if you have access to one or a garage. But I'm just going to give it a quick test flight to make sure it's working as I expect it to. So here goes. Thanks very much for watching the video and please be sure to comment, like and also subscribe for more videos like this.